So now that we have that set up, I'm going to add an attribute to my control shape right here. I want to be able to select this control shape and control all the plunging with this. So you can see over here I have my standard uh, attributes here. I want to add a custom one. So I'm going to go um, modify, add attribute. And we'll leave all these at default. We're going to use a float value for the name. Let's just put plunge. And I'm going to go from 0 to 10, and the default's going to be 0. Say OK. And there it is. It won't do anything right now, but it will pretty soon. Next thing we're going to want to do is set up our set driven keys. So let's select, uh, well, first we'll go to our animate menu. Choose animate set driven key set. That'll bring up this empty window here. I'm going to select our control object, choose load driver, and plunge is what we're going to use as our driver. Now we're going to have um, a couple things happening with the set driven key. I'm going to have, uh, when I, when I uh, change this plunge value from 0 to 10, I'm going to want my plunger object to go from here down to here, like you saw when I was testing it earlier, but I also want this handle to move down. So we're going to have two different things going on. So let's select the handle here, then I'm going to say load driven. And then I want to come up here to options and make sure clear on load is turned off. Because if I select something else and say load driven, it's going to throw it in here, but it's going to get rid of my handle object. I don't want to get rid of that, so I want to make sure clear on load is not enabled. Now what I want to do, I want to select both my curves at their control vertice level. So I'm going to come in the outliner, select both curves, then jump down to my control vertex level, and I'm just going to select all of the vertices. And I don't think it matters if soft selection is on right now, but I'm just going to turn it off just for this second. And come in here, say load driven, and there it is. It's made an array right here for all the vertices over here. Now that I have those in here, I'm going to go back to my object level and come back into here. Let's start with uh, creating the, the keys for our plunger. So I have control, plunge, and I want that to control both these objects, x, y, and z values. And right now our plunge is set to zero, and these are where I want them to be at zero. So that's all set up. I'm going to hit key. Next, I'm going to go up here, select my plunger, change the value to 10. And then I'm going to edit my control vertices for both curves. Now I want to have soft selection on. And I think I want to turn that up just a little bit. That might be too much. And let's move it down. That should be good. And maybe let's uh, let's say when it's pushed down, let's have these move out just a little bit. All right. So now let's say key. And that should be it. Let's test that out. Select our control object. Right now plunge is set to 10. Let's put it back to 0. You see our plunger updated. So let's test out dragging. Yeah, looks pretty good. So now we need to also make the handle move down so that it <laughs> stays with the plunger. So what I'm going to do is set our plunge to zero, which it is right now, and I'm going to set our handle. It's going to control the Y movement, so I'm going to go plunge handle, translate Y, and right now it's, I, it's where I want it to be when plunge is equal to zero. So I'm just, just going to say key. 
Next is going to be the down position. And I'm just going to get it pretty close. So I'm going to jump to side view here. And I just want to make sure that when my plunger is all the way down, that the uh, handle is still the same distance from the top part of the plunger. And just a quick way to do that, I'm just going to draw a cube. Move that up here. Just going to use this for reference. There we go. All right, so let's go back into our set driven key. Oop, I'm going to make sure soft selection is off, which it is. Close that. So let's go set plunge to 10. And while we're there, so now this is going to be down here now. And this right there. So when plunge is equal to 10, I want this handle to be right here. Let me double check that plunge is 10. I think it is. Yes. So let's say key. All right, let's test that out. Set plunge back to zero. And there we go. The handle is moving nicely along with the plunger. I no longer need this object. Now that we have our set driven keys set up, I just want to set up a simple rig here so that I can move the plunger around and reposition it without anything getting messed up. Right now, if I were to select everything and move it, you'll see the uh, NURB surfaces don't really like that very much. So to do that, we're going to select our two revolved surfaces, and I'm going to select the handle object, and then I'm going to shift select our control object, and press P for parent. Okay, now if I select our control object and move, everything moves along nicely. You'll see our base curves are still here. That's okay. Also, our uh, lofted surfaces, they're not parented, but they are moving properly because they're already part of the two main revolved NURBS surfaces. So this extra stuff here, I'm just going to create a group for. And I'll just call it um, plunger construction. And yeah, that'll work. So now I can select the control object. I can move everything around. And if we want, we can select our two curves since we don't need to see them and hide them. Just press Control H to hide them. Now if I select our control object and move the plunger around, you won't see the curves here anymore. And Oh, actually I have a little material here for our uh, plunger. There we go. That makes a big difference. All right, so now with our control object, I can move this, I can rotate it, I can scale it, and it'll still work as a plunger. So now you're all set up to plunge a clogged virtual toilet. Have fun.